Good morning. I'd like to welcome you to Greater Dimensions Living Word Restoration Center. All our viewers across the spectrum this morning and everybody that's here with us today. We'd like to welcome you. And we pray that through this message, God will just give us insight and wisdom and give us the opportunity to just love on others. Our message today is going to be about understanding love. Okay? So before we get started, you know I like to do Mike Murdoch. And um my my wisdom keys here. So so if you're with me, I just want you to bear with me and listen to these. Okay, before I do all that, I need to do my my confession. If you got your word, hold it up today. Wave it around. If you don't, you got it on the phone, hold it up. Wave it around. Hold it up, just wave it around. And we want you to begin to get in the word. We want you to begin to know the word for yourself. You know the word for yourself, you see the word. It's going to produce in your life. How do you know this word will not return void, but it will accomplish everything God says it will do? Okay? So here we go. Let's make our confession today. Say, I am. I am. Who the Bible says I am. Who the Bible says I am. Say, I have. I have. What the Bible says I have. What the Bible says I have. Say, I can do. I can do. What the Bible says I can do. What the Bible says I can do. Say, I'm a believer. I'm a believer. And not a doubter. And not a doubter. Say, I'm a doer of the word. I'm a doer of the word. And not just a hearer only. And not just a hearer only. And say, my life. My life. Is the better. Is the better. After having heard. After having heard. The word of faith. The word of faith. Say, faith comes by hearing. Hearing, faith comes by hearing and hearing and hearing by the word of God by the word of God and it shall produce and it shall produce in my life in my life say faith 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 faith, faith. say my faith my faith is growing is growing exceedingly exceedingly and my faith and my faith is working is working by love by love and my love and my love is working is working by faith by faith and I declare and I declare that I'm restored that I'm restored in every area in every area of my life of my life today today amen, amen. now how many of you believe that amen. thank you God you got to believe it now, why are, we, why are we having to do all these confessions? You know, we believe it's part of it. The other half that you have to believe. You have to believe the word of God, and you're going to have to confess the word of God. The Bible says we have the power of life and death. Where is it? Say say with me. Say it's in my tongue. It's in my tongue. And I speak life. And I speak life. To myself. To myself. And others. And others. Okay, let me give you my principles today. I want to do eight, but I don't think I have time to do eight of them. I'm going to do four of them, and I'll make sure to do the other four. Couldn't kind of make up my mind which four I want to do today. But I'm going to do five, six, seven, and eight. Now, these are wisdom keys by Mike Murdoch. Love this book. We continue to do this book, and I'm going to do this book as long as God says do this book. And we'll do it over and over and over again. When we start doing this book, y'all know when we start doing this book? When it's done. Huh? What do you say? Say it again. When it's done, but then we can keep reading it. No, it, it's going to be done when we get it. When we get it. Oh. Okay? So that's why, you know, when we get it, that's when we start doing it. All right? Other than that, we're going to do it over and over and over again. Y'all hear me, right? Now, I think I've been doing it quite some time. I mean, we ain't got it yet. We ain't got it yet. Because, see, you don't know who you are. You don't know what you attribute to, or you don't know how to grasp this and put this operation in your life. God wants us putting the word operation in our life. So number five says, listen to this, number five. The secret of your future is hidden in your daily routine. Say that with me. Say, say my secret. Of my, of my future is hidden is in my daily routine. My daily routine. Now, what do you do? What do y'all do on a daily basis? What do you do on a daily basis? Work. Work. Study. study read. read. What do you do on a daily basis? Eat. Eat. Huh? Sleep. Sleep. What do you do? Play music? Sing? Learn some new things? Don't we? 
But when you start getting a routine down, you're going to find out that God has some hidden things within that routine. See, a lot of times we start off like a shotgun blast. You know? It, it, it's not like you're taking a single shot and hitting something. A shotgun blast is kind of like this to try to make sure you hit something. But a lot of times, you know, that shotgun blast is like, well, I can hit it, but it don't, it's going to slow down the distance to your effectiveness of that thing. You know what I mean? It's going to be shorter because it's going to peter out. But you're taking one shot with one round and you're shooting out there. It allows it to go farther. Y'all ever thought about that? No. Yeah. Come on, y'all, in class now. Hey. Okay? So the secrets of your future is hidden in your daily routine. Say my secrets. My secrets. Is hidden. It's hidden. In my daily routine. In my daily routine. Now you gotta start being purpose about your daily routine. And we teach you nothing else. I want you to get purpose about your daily routine. Don't just take it for granted, but I want you to get purpose about your daily routine. Okay? Number six. Your, re your rewards in life are determined by the problems you solve for others. How many of you like solving problems for others? Amen. Y'all like solving problems for others? Mm -hmm. Well, now listen, your rewards are hidden in that. See, people pay for you solving their problems. Y'all hear me? They will pay for you solving their problems. When you don't when you walk around, you're just being all selfish. This is all about me. Nobody cares about me. Then you're missing purpose in life. How many know God has put you as, put you on earth with a purpose? Mm -hmm. Now, I like to say this. I like to say this. We are what? Say we are fruit trees. Yeah. Fruit trees. We are fruit trees. Right? How many of you see that, that tree loaded? See yourself loaded. You're bearing fruit. You know? Uh, we had some great peaches this this week that we passed out to the community, and those peaches were great. And, and people asked me, where did y'all get those peaches at? I said, I don't know, but I thought I was the only one who fell in love with them. No, those peaches are great. And so, now, now just think about this. When that tree is loaded, before it goes, the, the limbs are kind of swinging high like this, right? When it gets loaded, what it do? It kind of starts to drop. Why? Got this. Now, how many of you ever seen that fruit tree reach up and grab a peach? Y'all ever seen that before? The tree that they're hanging on, anybody ever seen it reach up and grab a piece of its own fruit and start eating? <laughs> Y'all ever seen that before? No? Yeah? Mm -hmm. What do you think if it did? Well, well, think about it. God didn't ordain that tree for its own fruit. He ordained that tree for others to eat off of it. So how many people eat off that tree? A lot of people, right? So now, that when, it, when you start pulling fruit off the tree, it can do what? It can bear more. It can get heavy. It helps keep it healthy. A lot of times, we don't like people to eat off us. We don't like people to, to pull our fruit. And we don't understand that wants to keep us healthy. Help us reach purpose in life. Everybody wants purpose, right? Yeah. Say my rewards. My rewards. In life. In life. Are determined. Are determined. By the problems. By the problems. I solve. I solve. For others. For others. Now here's the question to you. What problems does that peach tree solve for others? Hunger. What? Hunger. Hunger. Y'all ever think about it? We take it for granted. We don't even think about it. But it is solving a problem, isn't it? Mm -hmm. What's that problem? Say hunger. Or uh, it might just solve them. What, what's, a, what's another word you can say? It just might bring, um, what's the right word? Huh? Fulfillment. Or uh, it might just bring pleasure to you. I'm just eating that, that, that peach. Y'all ever thought about it? It doesn't have to be so deep always, you know, that it gets spooky. But you, you, you're enjoying that peach. Bring fulfillment because you, you just ate that peach and you enjoyed it. You don't need to try to eat the whole tree of peaches, but you just that one has brought fulfillment to you. Y'all ever thought about that? Come on now, class. I need you to get involved with it. Okay? Number seven. 
When you want something you have, you have never had, you've got to do something you have never done. How many want some things that you don't have? Mm -hmm. Anybody? Mm -hmm. so, so what do you got to do? So I got to do something that I've never done. Now, when you focus and you know that you, you're in this vein or in this routine every day, and you say, it's not producing what I want, it gives you the, the mindset or outlook that you can look outside and see, okay, what else I need to do? What else, I, what else can I do? And a lot of times, because we're not spending time in the Word, we miss how to get in the right vein. How many know God loves you? Amen. Say God loves me. God loves me. And, and in that love, he's got it in the word. As you begin to search him out, he's going to be found. He's going to begin to speak to you. He's going to begin to tell you things that you never dreamed of. Y'all hear me, right? Mm -hmm. Y'all remember how I said a guy was, um, they had been broke, lost his jobs. And he did it like three times. And so he said, we get up in the morning, go to Burger King and all that stuff. But he said, this one guy, his neighbor, he invited him to a conference. He, he really couldn't afford to go. How many of y'all always say that? I can't afford to do that. Mm -hmm. Y'all say that, those kind of things? I can't afford to do it. A lot of times, what you can afford to do is what you need to do. Some of the other stuff you need to put aside. And he decided to go to this conference. He went to the conference. And the guy there was there, and he said, hey, I got this little book on prosperity. You'd love to read this book, you know? And so, so, so he, he got him a little book. He said, go to Burger King when he got back home. And he'd sit in the corner. Say he couldn't afford to even buy any food, but he'd save enough money to buy coffee. And he could only get one cup of coffee in the morning. So he'd sit in the corner and read the book. As he began to read the books on the laws of prosperity, God began to open up things for him. And he said, he said, after he read that book and began to study that book and search that book out, he says it was probably a year later he was a millionaire. Why? He started hearing the voice of God. He started hearing the opportunities of God. You know, how many of you know, how many of you heard this before? Opportunity knocks at the door. Anybody heard that term before? That might be a little bit older than y'all, but y'all heard that term? Say opportunity. Opportunity. Knocks at the door. Knocks at the door. But let me correct you today. Opportunity don't knock at your door. You know what opportunity do for you? It sits idly by. It's right here in your face, and it waits on you to recognize it. You recognize it, and you begin to pursue it, and then you got something going for you. But if you don't, how many of you ever had things that you know that pass you up? That you just didn't know, oh, that ain't for me. You didn't recognize the potential of it in your life. Y'all with me? Come on now, y'all say, oh me. Oh my. Because opportunity stands out of the by. If you don't recognize it, you will miss it. So what you got to be able to do? See, I got to be able to perceive. I got to be able to see. I got to be able to hear. I got to be able to, to understand the things of God. Y'all with me? Okay. So I got to do something that I never done. All right, here we go. Here we go. Here we go. Here we go. Now we in here and we we're starting to work on 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 worship in the place, right? Huh? How many know we're going to have to get out of our comfort zone? Y'all hear me? What are we going to have to do? Yeah. And we're going to have some snot sometimes, some crying sometimes, some boogers falling from my nose, but we're going to be where? In the presence of God. And we're going to be what? Worshiping Him. We're going to be running through this place sometimes, but what are we going to do? We're going to worship Him. What are we determined to do? So we're determined to worship Him. We're determined to have his presence in this place. Y'all with me? Y'all with me? Amen. So can y'all see yourself with some, some tears falling down your eyes? Can y'all see that? We gonna do what? Let me go worship. All right, good. Let me go on. 
Number eight, the last one for the day in wisdom. And it goes something like this. It goes something like this. All men fall. What did I say? The great ones get back up. Which are you going to be? Say, I'm going to be one of the great ones. Now, now, there's a book that we had back there. It's called, it's called From Good to Great. The book we had back there is From Good to Great. How many of you like being good? Good kind of puts you in an average perspective. It puts you right along that flat line, if I could say between five, five is the top. It puts you somewhere in that neighborhood of probably two, two, two point five. That's good. Great puts you where? It puts you above. Great helps you reach what you are after, and even farther. Y'all with me? Mm -hmm. so, so, so you have to make up in your mind, and you got to start doing what? Say, I have to talk to myself. I have to talk to myself. Now, I know what people say. How many of you people say you're crazy for talking to yourself? See, people talk to themselves. What do y'all say? The first thing you say is what? They're crazy. Look at them talking to themselves. Anybody that's done that before besides me? I see a guy in Syracuse walking down the street all the time talking to himself. I'm like, man, he's crazy. Something wrong with him. I ain't never heard what a man say, but I've judged him. Premature. The guy might have been talking to God. He might have been saying, God, you are my source. You the greatness of my life. Y'all ever ride down the road and do that? Huh? Y'all ever just speak to speak to God? And then how, how many of you ever been in, in, in such come a bond that you know you riding down the road and you're like, Lord, if you don't help, this this thing gonna be done. Then you gotta tell yourself, shut up. Stand up. The word of God declares this about you. Y'all y'all ever did that before? No, y'all y'all ain't did that. Uh, but how many of you know you, you're gonna have to learn how to speak to yourself? That's why we have you doing these confessions. What it said? Say, I am, I am. Who the Bible says I am. Who the Bible says I am. Now, now wait a minute. You can choose to, to get on board or you can choose to be left behind. The guy can be sitting next to you, emphasizing what the word has to say, and the guy that's sitting next to him may be not emphasizing. One succeeds and the other one does. It's up to you. Y'all y'all with me? Mm -hmm. Okay. So, if I want something I never had, I got to do something I never done, right? All men falls, but the great one gets back up. What's going to keep you down? You. It ain't going to be anybody else. Say it's going to be me. Come on, say it with me. It's going to be me. What's going to cause you to be great? Say me. Come on, I like it. Say me. Y'all can't be afraid of this now. You can't afraid, you can't be afraid of this. Y'all you know, see yourself worshiping. Y'all see yourself doing this great. I'll tell you, God shows up. I, I left yesterday. I left yesterday. Now we had a like an impossible task yesterday when we gonna put the sign up. That was like impossible. Let's put that sign up on the building yesterday. So, but when you're determined to do things for God, you know what? He, he gives you help. The first thing I liked it was, why does the name pull up out there? Brother, brother um, a warrior pull up. He said, can I help y'all? What are y'all doing? So I said, oh, we want to help as much as we can. So that's help for me to start. There, uh, we stand out there, other guys from down the, down the, down the street come to, what, what are you doing? I said, we're trying to put this sign up. So he come out there, he started measuring the holes for me, showing me how to get the diameter for the holes and, and what we need to put it up on the wall with. I said, I like that. 
We put the ladders up. Look like it ain't going to work. But when you start doing it God's way, he sends you what you need. And folks, you know it. We going to build this frame and try to put this thing up. And everything we need is right at our fingertips. We know you know it. We had bungees on the trailer. Bungees. And we took bungees and hung this, hung this sign up. And then we, we was able to push it against the wall and mark it where we need to build holes at in there. Sent my helper, my help me to the store. Said, go talk to the guy. She went and found this guy in the store. And he starts saying, no, you need this, you need that. She come back with everything we need. And in, in, in what? About 30 minutes from that, we got that sign hung. Up. We got it hung. So listen, let me tell you something. What we don't realize a lot of times, when you start out to do something, and you're going to do what God, God needs you to do, He's going to have some mentors along the way. He's going to have some helpers along the way. He's going to, don't take it for granted. Don't just like, well, I don't need anybody. Because we all need somebody, don't we? We all need some help, don't we? And so when we do that, our helpers come. And, and it might be just a tad bit of information you need to cause you to be successful. Y'all with me? So, so the great ones get back up. It might have what it took me five chances or ten chances yesterday or the day before to put the sign up. But we was determined to do what? Put the sign up. So what do we do? We got the sign up. So uh, what I like y'all to do is take the sign and put it on the web so people can see the sign. Okay? So, so, so that's see what we're talking about here. Okay? Get over here today. That's it. We're talking about love, right? Yeah. Kind of bring you up to speed. This message is on understanding love. Okay, I know what everybody says. Everybody says I know how to love, right? How many know love is is hard work? Amen. Y'all know that love is hard work. Shake your head, give me that yellow verse of nine. Now, I've been some places in the world, and if I can shake my head at them, they know what I'm talking about. If I do it like that, they like, he got to understand. If I do it like that, they say, uh-uh, uh-uh. You know, I was in Germany when I first got to Germany, and I say, hey, I want some of that chicken right there. That man looked at me like, Nick's for steam. Nick's, Nick, Nick's for steam. Nick's for steam. Nick's, Nick's. I'm like, chicken, chicken, chicken. Nick's for steam. Nick's for steam. Chicken, chicken. Nick's for steam. Nick's for steam. That way you'll tell me. I said, who can help me? Who can tell this man I want chicken? Right? Who can tell this man I want chicken? You know? <laughs> and the man said, you want chicken? <laughs> man, you know what I'm talking about all the time. He said, you ain't trying to speak German to me. You in Germany. You in Germany. At least try. Y'all see what I'm saying? So what he's doing? Pulling me out of my element. So I learned how to say chicken. Hinchin, 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 hinchin. You can just say hinchin. You know how you, you go here and you say, I want a, a, a die in a leg. Over there you say hinchin, he can eat whole chicken. Y'all see that? Huh? Boy, I would love that whole chicken. Boy, the customs are different. So it causes you to love. The foundation scripture, if you have your Bibles, go there with me. I need y'all to put your eyes on this. Go there with me. The foundation scripture is 1 John 3, 14. Understanding love. 1 John 3, 14. We all have the same man. Now I need y'all to participate with me because I need some different versions of this thing. I need y'all to read on different versions. I need somebody to get it on the message, somebody to get it in the Amplified, somebody to get it in King James, somebody to get it in 
And in whatever version of the Bible you got. I like for I like for everybody to participate. We're in what? Say we're in class. We're in class. All right. First John three fourteen. First John three fourteen. We know that we have passed from death unto life because we love the brethren. He that loveth not his brother abideth in death. Everybody got cell phones if you don't have pipe? There's pipes under the chair also if you need them. There's some somewhere under the, under the seat. But if you have you have cell phones, you can put the Bible app on there and they give you multiple multiple um, versions on the on your phone. That's why I got my phone up here. I kind of like it too with the multiple versions on it. Okay? Okay, so so now look. First John 3.14. We know that we have passed from death into life. Anybody got that in a different version? Okay. We know that we have passed over out of death into life by the fact that we love the brethren, our fellow Christians. He who does not love, abide, remains, is held, and kept continually in spiritual death. Okay. So, so, so when you don't love, where are we held at? Say that with me. Say we are held in spiritual death. Mm -hmm. so, so how many remember this song? I know y'all remember it. Y'all well, y'all might not remember this song, but there's a lady called Tina Turner. What's that song? Y'all remember that? What's love got to do with it? Got to do with it. Y'all remember that? Mm -hmm. how, how do the rest of that go? It's a second hand emotion. Y'all remember it? Huh? Y'all need to look at us sometimes. No, but, but she sang that song, and what happened, everybody was dancing to it, and then they can't figure out why they break it up with each other, why marriages are falling apart, because they say love was a second-hand emotion. How do you know love is not a second-hand emotion? Mm -hmm. Come on. Now, y'all got to know this. Love is not what? Say love is not. Love is not a second-hand emotion. A second-hand emotion. So when you don't, when you don't understand love, it has you what in contempt. Do you have it? In, do you have it in, in another version? What C E V said? Anybody got it in another version? I got it in C E V. Huh? Says, it says our love for each other proves we have gone from death to life. But Wait a minute! Our love for each other proves that we've gone from what death. To life. Y'all with me? It, it proves that we've gone from death to life. It proves that we've gone from where? Death to life. When we, when we now, when we now get in love, it proves that we move from one state into another state. All right? So, so it, it, it proves that we've gone from death to life. Okay? So, now, now. He that loves not his brother abides in death. Now, I know what you're thinking. Our neighbors are who? They're my neighbors. My neighbors. Are my brothers. Are my brothers. Now, now, what do you got to do? We got to be able to love them. You know what right? We got to be able to love them. All right? So, so let's go. Let's go. The purpose of this message is to create a relationship. We want to create a relationship with, father, with our Father God. No, no, why is it so important we have a relationship with Father God? We want to create this relationship with Him because if we begin to have a relationship with Him, He's going to begin to speak to us about everything else we need to, to have. Y'all with me? Mm -hmm. Come on, shake your head. Give me that universal smile. Mm -hmm. Give me that universal smile. Okay, so it says relationship with Father God causing us to fall more in love with Him. Living a debt-free life. How many want to live a debt-free life? Amen. Debt-free life. The Bible says, oh, no man anything but to do what? Come on, say the love it. Love Come on, class, I can't hear you. Y'all quiet. I, I need my class speaking up, you know. Y'all look, look. He says, that, oh, no man anything but to love him. No man anything but to love him. All right, so let's go. I'm trying to get you up to speed. We did Romans 13 and 8. 
that that's the same thing I just said to you. Oh, don't man anything but to love love one another. So you want to love each other. Now what? 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 Here, oh, thank you, Lord, because y'all play basketball, right? That what y'all told me. How y'all do yesterday? Oh, oh yeah. He, he won both games. Yeah, he got MVP the second game. He got what? He got MVP the second game. He got MVP the second game. Why not? So, so now, now, how you can do that? Yeah, how? Training. I like it. He got it. Training. Training. So in order for you to be good, you got to do what? Say, I got to train. I got to practice. I got to practice. So how do we begin to get this love thing down? Say, I got to practice it. Now, how many got people that you don't like? Or people that don't like you? Come on now. Anybody got them like that? Huh? Anybody got them like that? Okay, what are you going to do about it? That's the question I'm going to ask you. What are you going to do about it? Say, I'm going to train. I'm going to train. I'm going to practice. I'm going to practice. How to love them. I'm going to love them. Y'all with me? Come on now. I don't hear everybody saying that. Now, y'all shutting down on me. Say, I'm going to train. I'm going to train. I'm going to practice. I'm going to practice. How to love them. How to love them. Because I'm going to be MVP. Ain't that right? Got a right? For what? Training? Practicing? How many like to get a reward for being MVP? Mm -hmm. uh, check, check it out now. Can you see yourself MVP, MVP for God? Huh? When, when you see this, you're going to be like, you know what God called David? You know, half of my eye, boy. That love talk right there. Y'all hear me? That love talk. Y'all don't even know what love talk is. Boy, you're the apple of my eye. Come on, young man. You see that? You see that girl? You be like, girl, you the apple of my eye. Oh my God. <laughs> y'all got it? Come on now. Y'all y'all know what love talk is, don't you? Come on. Y'all with me? Come on now. We ain't too young to learn how to love. Yo, let's see how I don't. Y'all see how? Uh, we got to practice it. We got to practice it. So, so, so look, love's going to cost you something. Y'all with me, right? Mm -hmm. It's just going to cost you something. Let me get here. John 36 and 11. Not John, but Job 36 and 11. Job, y'all know where they're in the Bible? Go to Job 36 and 11. Get that for me. Job 36 and 11. Pick it up. When you got to say amen. Job 36 and 11. I ain't just going to allow y'all to sit here and not, not get involved in class. Get involved in class. Find it. Job 36 and 11. It's in the Old Testament. It's somewhere about what? About middle of the Bible. Probably somewhere. Somewhere there. Job 36 and 11. A little bit less than middle. Probably. Y'all got it? Your. Yeah. All right. Who's got it? Raise your hand. Who needs help? Raise your hand. Need help finding it. Everybody got it? Mm -hmm. Everybody got it? Job 36 11. Who want to read? I, I want somebody else to read. Pastor Vicky always read good for me. Somebody else read for me. I got CV. Got C CV? Who got it in another version? I got the New International Version. New International. Who else got another one? Pastor Vicky, you're going to be stuck with King James. So, okay. Uh, what you got? Um, he got, oh, he got to rule you out. He got King James. <laughs> you got Amplified. What you got back there? Jesus. Huh? Jesus. What? Which one? So what do I have? Yeah, what, what version of the Bible you got? Oh, um, New King James. New King James. Okay, now y'all see all those different versions we just got, right? I'm going to start with the King James right here. This young man right here is going to start with the King James for me. Okay, read the King James for me. Yeah. Pleasure. Now look, I'm proud of you to read all that. He said, if they obey and serve him, they shall spend their years in prosperity. And what? Their days in prosperity and their years in what? Pleasure. How many want to spend your days like that? How many want, want days in prosperity? 
How many want years in pleasure? Now, now, come on. You got to get out of your comfort zone. You got to get out of your comfort zone. I want my days to be in prosperity. You know, you know, you know why a lot of times things happen? Because we don't have money or we don't have prosperity enough around us to take care of it. Y'all mm -hmm. know that? Why, why families are, are starving sometimes? They don't have the means to get taken care of. But if we learn to love, we can help somebody else, can't we? Ain't that right? We can help somebody else. So, so now look, all right, that was, that was King James. You got to amplify. Give me amplify. If they obey and serve him, they shall spend their days in prosperity and their years in pleasure and joy. Wait a minute. How many want them years to be in pleasure and joy? If y'all want that, pleasure and joy. Go ahead. That was it. Okay. Who, who else had it? What, what you got back here? I have CEV. CEV. Read CEV for me. And if they obey, they will be successful and happy from then on. Wait, 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 wait. If they obey, they will be what? Say successful. Successful. How many want to be successful? Amen. What it takes to be successful? Amen. Huh? Say obey. 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 See, see, when, when you don't know this, you can't, you can't attain life issues that you really want to attain. And, and we think it's something big, somebody that's keeping us away from us, but what they're keeping from us is we don't understand. We don't know something. When we don't know that, then we can't attain what other people are attaining in. But when you know it, it puts you where? They put me on an even playing field. Y'all with me? Y'all with me? Yeah. Who else got another version? Anybody else got a different version? What do you got? In our feet. Um, it says, if they obey and serve him, they will spend the rest of their days in prosperity and their years in contentment. Okay, so so wait a minute. The rest of their days where? So, okay, if I didn't know it now, but I know it, I, now I pick it up. It says, I'm going to spend the rest of my days where? In prosperity. And the, my years going to be where? In contentment. Now, now think, think about this. How many people you know that are not living their life in contentment. Why? And we're going to bring somebody out. You know what I'm going to do? I'm going to turn around and say, you you the one caused me. We're going to look at our parents and we're going to say, you caused me. We're going to say, you didn't do this for me. But how many of you know that you have an obligation? Y'all with me? I don't want my children to be at the same state I live. I want them to live a higher life. I don't want the ministry to be way down here. I want them to live what? Say a greater life. Look, say a greater dimension. Greater dimension. How many see your lives living in greater dimension? I'm talking about the day you're here, but tomorrow you're there. The next day you're here. You, 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 you study attainment because you're willing to, to obey. Y'all with me? Now we're talking about what? Say love. Understanding love. love. Say that with me. Say understanding love. Understanding love. So, so now, now I, I talked to y'all about the principles. Let me give you these principles quick because I got to go. Mm. The, the first principle is, is authority. Everybody know what authority is? Say authority. Authority. Authority is God's plan. God's plan. To protect my life. To protect my life. Come on, say authority. Authority. It's God's plan. It's God's plan. To protect my life. To protect my life. Now you probably say, how is that so? How is that so? You gotta obey it. It don't the devil don't want you to obey authority. So what he does, he keeps you fighting against authority. Y'all know what authority is? Everybody know what authority is? Yeah, no, maybe so. Huh? What he said? The government? That's that's one level of authority. I 
real, man. That's pretty intelligent. I, I like you, man. You're gonna be, you're gonna be my prime, prime student here, and and this thing gonna work for you greatly. You know why? Because he said, you said government. Government. Y'all ever thought about that? Government. Y'all ever see government around? Y'all want to see government around? Let me show you government. How many of you seen a stop sign? Yeah? What do you see? You see stop or do you see government? <laughs> see, you can read that thing wrong. You can see stop and not government. That's why the police can jump out there with his little black jack and go, wah, 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 and I think because he's going to inside his head about ten times. Because you did somebody who? The government. So he's acting on behalf of who? The government. Y'all with me? Now, we're pretty young here. How many, let, me, let me give y'all a simple one. In authority ring. Parents. 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 They are what? Say authority figures. Authority figure. It gives you no right to be on the same level with your parents. Why? They're your parents. Now, it was just raining out there a minute ago, right? Y'all saw that rain? There was big drops, too. Right? As long as you got the umbrella over your head, you're not getting what? Wet. I'm not getting wet. But when I walk out from under that umbrella, what's going to happen? I'm going to get wet. And the umbrella is right here. I'm going to get wet. So I just walk down that authority line. And when you do that, and you you know, you can miss that stop sign out there. You can be like, oh, he ain't nothing coming. I ain't going to wait at the stop sign. And it'd be like, what, what Mama Maple said, old dog coming. Y'all don't even know what old dog is, do you? Y'all remember them buses called Greyhounds? <laughs> that bus comes in there and ran right over them. Smack. Why? Because they fail to obey. They fail to stop at the stop sign. So you can't just take it for granted that I can deal with my parents and say, you know, you got to do what? Say, I got to love my parents. If you don't get nothing else, I want you to have a relationship with God and the people and the things that God needs you to have a relationship with. Y'all with me? Mm -hmm. So the first one was, uh, was authority. The second one was agreement. Agreement. Say agreement. Agreement. These are the principles now. Say agreement. Agreement. Agreement is God's plan to crown my life with peace. Say agreement. Agreement. It's God's plan. It's God's plan. To crown my life. To crown my life. With peace. With peace. How many of you like peace? Say I gotta learn how to agree. Y'all y'all with me? Okay. Now now come on. I uh, will bring you up the speed of the rest of them. I gotta get on down here. Okay. And let me do number nine. Number nine is honor. Y'all, y'all, y'all know what honor is? Who know what honor is? Now these are principles that I want you to begin to walk on. You're not too young, you're not too old, but I want you to begin to walk on these principles. Who know what honor is? So here's this plan for you to live a long time. It's, it's, it's God's plan for things to go well with you. Not just for you to live a long time, but God wants things to go well with me. Say God. God wants things, wants things to, go well to go well with me. With me. Y'all with me, right? Come on now. Come on. Get excited. Get excited. Get excited. Now, now and this, this is why I was talking to some guys the other day. I said, how many of us see the law of gravity? Anybody know what the law of gravity is? Huh? The law of gravity is if I get on this table right here and I walk off, what am I going to do? Y'all with that, right? Mm -hmm. So it's called a law of what? Say gravity. gravity. If I walk off the table, I'm going to do what? See, I'm going to fall. You know what? Right? I'm going to fall. Okay, now, now, now. Do we see that law? You don't physically see, but how many know it's there? How many know it's there? Is it there? Y'all believe it's there? Yeah? How many confess that 
Spirit is there. Yeah. Yep. I confess that that Lord is there. So if I get on something high and walk up, I'm going to do what? Say I'm going to fall. Right? How many know there's a principle out there called, a law out there called sowing and reaping also? Y'all with me? How many see the law? What does the law say? What it said? Say, I'm going to reap what I sow. Not like Fred Sanford said, how, how he used to say, I'm going to do unto others before they can something crazy as Fred Sanford used to say. But, but listen to me, listen to me, listen to me now, now, now. So you don't see that law of sowing and reaping. But we just told you that we got to do what? We got to love. Right? So now, if I want love, what I got to sow? Come on. Say, I got to sow love. Right? Now, I know what you're trying to say. I'm going to pick who I'm going to sow love to. How do you know you're going to miss the ball game? You, you can't miss the ball game like that. You gotta, you're going to have to sow love wherever you go. Y'all with me? All right. So, 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 you want to practice this law. And when you practice this law, sowing and reaping, verse 8 says this, 2 Corinthians, verse 8, uh, 2 Corinthians chapter 9, verse 8 says this. It says, and God is able to make all grace abound towards you, that you always have an all sufficiency in all things that may abound to every good work. Y'all yeah, hear me? So now he's going to make what? So he's going to give me some grace. So I can, I, can, I can abound to every good work here. So now, now let's look at the definition of love. The definition of love says seeking the best. Seeking the best. For others. For others. At my expense. At my expense. Now, now I know, I know. See, y'all thinking love is like this Google eye thing, you know, you know, you're just looking at it, you're infatuated with it, uh, uh, with the, uh, but that's not love. It's not just a crazy emotion. It's a way of life. And so love's going to cost you. Say it's going to cost me. It's going to cost me. To love somebody. To love someone. All right, let me put it in y'all level. All right, all right, all right. You come home and your parents' dishes are not done. How many of you jump in and do the dishes? Just jump up and do the dishes without having to be told. I'm putting it in where you at. Come on now. Y'all don't get mad with me. But if you jump up there and you do the dishes, what are you sowing? Say I'm sowing love. Uh, you, you walk to the house and the lawn needs to be cut. What do you do? Cut the yard. What are you sowing? Love. You see, you see mom and dad come home and they got bags in the car. You don't sit back and watch them get out of You jump up and go right out there. Let me help you with these bags. What are you doing? You're so in love. It's easy to tell somebody I love them. But it's hard to demonstrate. Y'all with me? So when we start, now, now, when you start getting it the other way, you start saying, okay, I understand this love thing. Then you're going to start to see that it's going to prosper in your life. How many want your lives prosper? Y'all with me, right? So say, say it's going to cost me something. The love there. Yeah. Now, I know, I, know, I know what you're thinking. Well, I didn't ask to be here. Come on, teenagers. You know what y'all thinking? Y'all thinking about it the wrong way. I know what y'all thinking. You think about it the wrong way. But how many of you know that God had purpose for you being here? Y'all with me? So it wasn't up to your parents to get you here. It was up to God to get you here. And God sent you here for what? Say purpose. Purpose. Come on now. Y'all with me, right? So now in order to understand what love is, in order to understand what love is, Let's take a let's take a look at what love is not. Y'all y'all want to go there with me? Go to First Corinthians, chapter thirteen, verse five. This is the love chapter. 
Go there with me. First Corinthians chapter 13. But y'all got to say me. Need y'all to pick it up in some different versions for me. We're going to take a look at what love is not. Tina Turner says it's a second-hand emotion. 13 and 5. 13 and 5. 1 Corinthians chapter 13, verse 5. Y'all got it? Yes. Who got it in the King James first? Examine yourself, whether ye be in the faith, in the faith. Prove your own self. Know ye not your own selves, how that Jesus Christ is in you, except ye be. That's first Corinthians 13. Okay. That's good. So that's good information to know. We need to examine ourselves. Thirteen and five. Do it not behave itself unseemly. Wait a minute. Love does not behave itself how unseemly. unseemly. Go ahead. Seek is not her own. Uh huh. Is not easily provoked. Uh huh. Wait, 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 wait. It's not easily provoked. How often you so easily provoked? How often somebody brushes you the wrong way and you you get easily provoked? How can somebody look at you the wrong way and you get what? Easily provoked. Why are you looking at me like that? Y'all ever been there? Huh? Mm -hmm. Y'all ain't never did that before. Yeah. Huh? Okay, go ahead. Think it no evil. It think it's no evil. Rejoice is not in iniquity. Rejoice is not in iniquity. But rejoice is in the truth. But rejoice is where? In the truth. Okay, who's got it in another version? Anybody else got it in another version? What 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 do you got? It does not dishonor others. It is not so seeking, it is not easily angered or deep, nor what, what why are you going too fast? Stop back up, slide a little bit. Why me? You, 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 you slide a little bit. Uh, back it up, do it again. It does not dishonor others. It does not dishonor others. It's not self-seeking. Wait a minute, wait a minute. Every time we talk about love, we talk about self-seeking. This is just me. How many know that's not love? It's not self-seeking. Go ahead. It's not easily angered. It's not easily angered. How often you find yourself angered or frustrated about something? Anybody besides me? You can get that way you can get angry or frustrated about something and then you, then you need to take a moment and like, wait a minute. I'm headed off the wrong end. I'm looking at this the wrong way. Go ahead. It keeps no record of wrong. It keeps no record of wrongdoing. How many of you keep record? How, how many of you be like, how many of you like, I watched the dishes last I swept the floor last. It's somebody else's time. Or uh, it's so and so time. Ain't that right? Or uh, how many of you find yourself keeping record? The devil don't care how he plays you, long as he do what? Long as he play you. Long as he play you, then you're like, well, somebody else need to do this. Y'all with me? Who else got it in a different version? Anybody else got another version? You want to amplify? That's the one I want to amplify. Listen, listen, amplify now. It is not conceited. Wait a minute. It's not conceited. Arrogant and inflated. Wait, wait, wait. What would it say to you? It's not, it's not got the big head about itself. It's not like, you know, I'm all this in a bag of chips. When you find yourself out there, you need to start checking. Something's wrong with this picture. Because you're now, why? Conceited. Go ahead. Arrogant and inflated with pride. It is not rude, unmannerly. Wait a minute. It's not rude. When somebody scream at you, how do you handle it back? Or what's the first thing go through your mind? If I'm screaming at you, ay, 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 how do you handle it? What do you think? 
What do you think? You 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 immediately got to defend yourself. Ain't that what happens? Ain't that what normally happens? Mm -hmm. You normally got yo. You the first thing you want to do is what? Say I want to defend myself. But it's not rude. Go ahead. Unmannerly and does not act unbecoming. Uh huh. Love. God's love in us does not insist on its own rights. Wait a minute. Now, this is key. God's love inside of us does not insist on its own rights. Or its own way. For, Go ahead. For it is not self-seeking. It is not touchy and mm -hmm. fretful or resentful. It takes no account of the evil done to it. Uh huh. It pays no attention to a suffered wrong. What well, it pays no attention to? A suffered wrong. So it pays no attention to a suffered wrong. Pays no attention to a suffered wrong. Y'all got that? Look at verse six too. Now they go to six, 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 and th let's, it does let's, not rejoice in injustice and unrighteousness. Uh huh. The, it does not rejoice at injustice and unrighteousness. Wait, wait, wait. Look, look, look. This incident that happened, what was his name? The Floyd. Y'all remember that? Mm -hmm. Now, it, the incident was wrong in itself, right? But why gives people an opportunity to go destroy other innocent people, stuff that had, had nothing to do with the incident? They're trying to bring in justice, but they're bringing in injustice. It's just as wrong as what that happened as this happened. Y'all see what I'm saying? So, so you, you can't do that. You can't do that. It does not rejoice at injustice and unrighteousness, but rejoice when right and truth prevails. What shall have to prevail? Say righteousness. righteousness. Say truth. Truth. Now, now, and if we get the truth, the Bible says that the truth will make us free. Some versions said that it'll do what? It'll set us free. Y'all with me? So, so what verse 7 says? Do we have verse 7 there? Oh, I missed. I got it down here. No, 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 Charity never fails, but whether there be prophecies, they shall fail. Whether there be tongues, they shall cease. Whether there be knowledge, it will vanish away. Okay. All right. Who's got it in another version? I got a CEV. What does CEV say? Read the verse you read. Huh? The same eight. Verse eight. Love never fails. Everyone who prophesies or thought in unknown languages will no longer be spoken. All that we know will be forgotten. Okay? So, so you got to understand that now. Love never fails. Okay? How, how it goes in the after five? Love never fails, never fades out or becomes obsolete or comes to an end. As for prophecy, the gift of interpreting the divine will and purposes and purpose, it will be fulfilled and pass away. As for tongues, they will be, be destroyed and cease. As for knowledge, it will pass away. It will lose its value and be superseded by truth. Okay. So, so what's going to prevail here? Say truth. True. When you love truth, is what's going to prevail. Now, let's talk about what love is and what love does. And we'll, we'll, we'll kind of quit right there. Let me, let me kind of Bring, bring you up to speed. But go to 13, um, 1 Corinthians chapter 13, verse 4. I like to say 4B. It's the last part of that verse. Y'all see that? Y'all with it? What'd you say? 13, uh, 1 Corinthians chapter 13, verse 4B. Everybody see it? Okay? And this is what it says now. Listen to it. This is what it says. I'm read, I don't read in the Amplify. Love endures long. Say it with me. Say love. Love endures, endures. Long. long. And is patient. And 
is patient. Wait a minute. So what? It's patient. It's not just taking a first look at things and overreact to it. It's willing to, to stop and take a second look at it. Y'all with me? So it says it's patient and it's also kind. Look at this. Love never ends nor boils over. How many of y'all find yourself boiling over? Y'all know what I'm talking about? How many get hot at it when, when, when you know that you should not be that way? It don't fall over with jealousy. If you're going to be in a relationship, you got to learn how to trust. Trust don't start with somebody else. It starts with who? Say it starts with me. When you learn how to trust, you can be secure in the things of God. If not, you're going to find yourself in a position of being needy. Y'all hear me? Y'all know what I mean by needy? Yeah? No? Being needy feels like you can't, you can't be by yourself. You got to have somebody else around you always. And that somebody you should have around you always is who? Say God. God. Okay? So love never is never envious nor falls over with jealousy. It's not boastful of being glorious. It don't talk about itself all the time. It don't be here talking about, I did this, I did this, I, 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 I. That's permission for you to fail. Y'all with me? All right, let me go. Does not display itself haughty. Does not. Now, we started telling you what love is. We're going to stop right there, and we're going to pick up next week. On 1 Corinthians chapter 13, verse 7. Thank you for being here with us today. And we hope that you got something from this message. And we'd like to see relationships growing and flourishing in this message. We'll start at verse 7 next week. Amen.